The Emperor Moth is the original gangster of Ice in the Sky. This flying predator has been around for centuries and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. With a large wingspan and powerful claws, the Emperor Moth is a force to be reckoned with, especially if you're a small insect or rodent trying to scurry away underneath the cover of the night. There are two types of moths that fly by day, the Tiger Moth and the Emperor Moth. The Emperor Moth is the OG of Eyes in the Sky. This magnificent creature has a wingspan of up to 12 centimeters and has a deep rusty brown color with bold bands of yellow, white, and black across its body and its wings. Then it has these large compound eyes that have an impressive range of vision and can spot predators from far away. The Emperor Moth is one of the largest and most beautiful moths in the world. You can find it in forests throughout Asia and parts of Australia. Did you know that the moth got its name from its striking resemblance to this feudal Japanese emperor? It's mostly brown or tan in color, but the tips of its wings are brightly colored with orange, red, and yellow patterns. Now, how do you know if what you're seeing is an emperor moth? Well, it's a fluffy moth that's gray brown with these big peacock like eye spots on all four of its wings and it has these pinky red markings at its wingtips. So just remember, it's the only large moth with eye spots on all four wings. You might think that it looks like the smaller eyed hawk moth, but that only has two large eye spots on the hind wings only. It's only half as cool as the emperor moth. Emperor moths belong to the family Saturnidae, and its name actually is related to the rings around the planet Saturn, and it refers to the eye spots that many of these emperor moth species have. When these moths are chillin', the forewings cover the eye spots on the hindwings, but if you mess around with them, the moths quickly lift the forewings and reveal these eye spots, which scares off their would-be predators. Now, how do these moths live every day? The male is like a hawk and they soar over their space in search of prey. They're active during the day so they can see their prey more easily. The females are less active during the day and mostly appear around dusk. So they attract males by releasing a scent that the male can detect through their antenna over a mile away. And several males will often gather around a female until one mates with her. So these male and female moths get really busy in May and June because that's when they lay their eggs. And eventually, these eggs hatch into small furry black caterpillars. These caterpillars feed on heather, bramble, and blackthorn. And then they shed their skin and molt several times and gradually get bigger. Fully grown caterpillars are green with black stripes dotted with yellow or purple warts where they grow tufts of hairs. In late summer, the caterpillar stops feeding and then it attaches itself to a twig or a strong shoot of heather using a silk thread. Then it spins and spins and spins a dark brown cocoon around itself. So the tiny entrance to this cocoon is funnel shaped with a narrow end outwards to prevent predators from coming in. Then the caterpillar stays in that cocoon over winter and gradually pupates, also known as changing into a moth. When a caterpillar pupates, most of the cells in its body break down and then slowly grow again in a completely different shape like a moth or a butterfly. At this point, the pupal stage is almost over and the moth will emerge soon. Now, where can you usually find these awesome emperor moths? I mean, being such a beautiful and unique creature, it can be found in a variety of habitats, although the emperor moth prefers forests and woodlands. This majestic creature has a wingspan of up to 12 inches, making it one of the largest moths in the world. It's also one of the most colorful, with these orange and black wings adorned with white spots. Now, don't be fooled by how pretty they are. Emperor moths are super important in the ecosystem, and they act as both prey and predator. These moths are pollinators, and their larvae serve as a food source for many animals. Speaking of food source, what do these moths even eat? 
The Emperor Moth will consume just about anything it can get its mandibles on. Usually, its diet consists of leaves, but hey, who wouldn't say no to eating other insects or even small vertebrates? It's even known to eat poisonous snakes and lizards without getting sick. That's pretty sick. The Emperor Moth's diet is really varied, and that helped it to become one of the most successful moth species in the world. It's estimated that there are millions of Emperor Moths worldwide, and they show no signs of going anywhere. Unless their predators get to them. The Emperor Moth has a lot of predators coming after them. Most commonly, we have birds, bats, and small mammals like weasels, mink, and shrews. Now, these animals will eat the moth at any stage of its life cycle, from egg to caterpillar to adult. Other predators include larger mammals like bears, raccoons, and opossums, reptiles like snakes and lizards, even some insects like wasps and ants, and in general, Anything that's big enough to catch and eat an emperor moth is a potential predator. You gotta watch out, man. But good for the emperor moth, it has a few defenses against these predators. The most obvious is its camouflage. An adult emperor moth is very well camouflaged when they rest on tree bark or leaves, making them hard to spot. What else can they do to protect themselves? Firstly, the emperor moth is foul-tasting and unpalatable to most predators thanks to the nasty chemicals in its body. That makes it pretty unappealing as a meal and means that many predators just won't have a taste. No thank you. Second, the emperor moth has camouflage colors and patterns on its wings which helps it blend in with its surroundings, making it a lot harder for predators to spot. And finally, if all else fails and the emperor moth is grabbed by a predator, it can emit a loud clicking noise which startles the predator and causes it to let go. Hey, if it works, it works. Together, these defense mechanisms make the emperor moth one of the most difficult insects for predators to successfully hunt. So you might want to ask, what do we do to protect these awesome moths? The wildlife trusts work closely with farmers and landowners to make sure that our wildlife is protected and to promote wildlife-friendly practices. That's super important because it means that we can all do our part to help keep our planet healthy and thriving. By working together, we can create living landscapes. Networks of these habitats stretching across town and country that allow wildlife to move about freely and for people to enjoy the benefits of nature. The emperor moth is a fascinating and beautiful creature. Though they're not commonly seen, those who are lucky enough to spot one should take the time to appreciate its unique features. With their large wingspan and striking colors, truly, they're a sight to behold. That's all for today. Now stop being a bogart and pass on these digital edibles by sharing this video. Thanks!